And obviously in 95, when stuff started going on, I mean, I remember I was young at the time, but you had the Source Awards, the East Coast, West Coast beef yeah. and all that. But something that got lost in it is Outcast getting booed. And Andre yeah. Three Stack saying the South got something to say. Yeah. And then from then on out, it seemed like Atlanta took over hip hop. Talk about that when that whole ordeal went down, how you guys were feeling, and what was the temperature after that? You know what? Um, there was there was a tension in the air, but it was it was just relative in, in terms of you know us being you know all in the same room, but it didn't it didn't apply to us directly. You know what I mean? Like because we were neutral, being that that was the first time ever in history had the South, you know, represented and was awarded in that regard. So like that was a first. So I think that we were, you know, as you could see from Dre's expression and his mannerism, that he was a little, you know, aggravated with, with, with the, the the negative energy and, and the booing. You know what I'm saying? But to be totally honest, uh, I was a little distracted by uh, just the, you know the acknowledgement and the opportunity to be in the room with so many other greats. And, um, you know, I, I was, I was appreciative, you know, I was appreciative of it, you know, at the time, you know what I mean? Like I had my, I had got me a tailor-made outfit for the, <laughs> for, <laughs> for the occasion, you know what I mean? Like I was feeling some kind of way, you know what I mean? And, uh, I don't know, you know what I mean? I wasn't really tripping, you know, but, it, um, but, but when Dre said that, uh, I just think that it was, um, uh, I think it was a general statement. I'm saying like I think that it was a uh, most certainly a proclamation. You know what I mean? Like you know, um, and we planted a flag there. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, this uh, it's just kind of just he just he just carved it in stone. You know, but I, I was kind of distracted at the time, man, because Big and Puff they were sitting right there on the front row, and I never forget. Um, Big, me and Big was real cool. You know what I'm saying? Um, Cause we had just got through doing uh, some of the first shows we had done as a crew, um, you know, in New York, uh, you know, with, with Outkast, you know, supporting and promoting the first album. So we were doing a lot of that. We was making those runs for the first time. And um, there's a story that I talked about on the Breakfast Club where Big, you know, kind of reached out to me. Well, first and foremost, Big was in the front of that stage, you know, singing word for word my verse to get up, get out. So he had a lot of love for me as an MC, you know what I'm saying? And um, and he was like, "Yo," uh, he said, I, "He said I don't, I don't really know what your situation is, but you know when you get your business in order, man, I want you to come be a part of my my my, my this project, my project, which which would ultimately end up being ready to die." Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I really don't know what happened with that or why we wasn't really able to get that get that done. But you know, it was still it was still a bond and a connection between us, even though we didn't, you know, I, unfortunately I was able to be a part of it, which is now legendary you know what i'm saying but anyway when we walked up on stage man like you know the homie he uh he he spoke to me i heard him he we was close enough to him where he was like yo c low you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. <laughs> so man. i don't know man i wasn't tripping off all of the negative and you know it was a little bit it was a little bit of the booing going on but then it really got you know the energy got specific when um you know when Shug did his thing up there mm, yeah we remember. Yeah, if, if you may, um, I heard you talking about a story where you were pretty much in. Uh, I think it was Vegas tonight with Biggie or L.A. Where did Biggie die? L.A. L.A. LA, LA where Biggie died that night. And um, can you talk about that story for our audience? Uh, how you recall that? Yeah, man. Um, I try. I try to make it short. You know what I mean? Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, we, we were out. We were out there. Uh, um, celebrating. Uh. Uh, a criminal, no, it was AT Aliens. It, it was it was Outcast's second album, AT Aliens. It had gone platinum, so they were doing a platinum party out there. So we were just kind of like in the mix, doing all of the networking and all the associated events, you know, um, that that were going on. So, you know, um, we so we was gonna stop by the big function and rock with them. You know like because again, we was all extended family, Dungeon family, and uh, Bad Boy. You know, like we we basically all started together, you know, being that Puff directed Players Ball. He directed the video for Players Ball for Outcast, if people don't know that history. Mm -hmm. So that's how far back we go, you know. So we was going over to support them like family would. And, uh, you know, it was like an eerie kind of feeling because, you know, everything was happening. And, um, but, you know, sometimes, you know what I mean? Like you kind of got to, 
you got to still kind of your business. You know what I mean? And um, it maybe it was it was you know obligatory in, in nature that they had to be there or whatever. But anyway, they was they were celebrating. They was feeling good, you know, because I remember um, Hypnotize was banging like it was just on mm-hmm. repeat, like it's like the only song that was playing that night. Uh, and we got there, we got there a little late, man. You know what I mean? And so it was kind of thinning out. And um, th- they were at the table, and it was kind of, you know, it was like on the dance floor. It wasn't, it wasn't behind a, a rope. They didn't have security or nothing. It was just at a table, like mm-hmm. people could walk up to, almost like you would, like a autograph signing kind of table, like, you know what I mean, like that. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, at first I didn't, th- I didn't think anything peculiar about it. You know, especially then little C's walked over to us. He's like, yo, 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 what's happening? And I, I remember really, really clearly how he asked, like, yo, who produced that black ice beat that touched what I never touched before? He's like, yo, I love that joint, man. So we was we was talking and blah, blah, blah. You know, threw up the piece to to, uh, to Big and Puff and, and all of that and showing love. But, you know, Gip whispers to me, he says, like, yo, basically, he's like, let's get the fuck out of here. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't know why you say that, big brush. We just got here. He said, "Man, like, you just said, let's go, man. This shit just don't feel right." So anyway, we left, and uh, by that time we had gotten down to the uh, down down the way to the Outcast Platinum Party, and we was in there for about thirty minutes, and um, and it was Gip again who came and got me off the floor, and he was like, "Man, let's go to the room, man. They just they just shot Biggie up the street," <laughs> and um, you know, yeah, man. So we were staying at a at a hotel where everybody was at, you know what I mean? So uh, it was the, the the Park Hotel, if y'all ever been to L.A. before, you know what I'm talking about. So Yeah, yeah so we, we we was walking in the lobby, and, you know, I mean, I know this is this is sensitive, and this is the second time I'm telling this story, but, you know, it was Buster, it was Spliff, you know, and a couple other the homies, you know what I mean, like, out there um, just in tears. Because we, 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 we wasn't really certain 100% if he had died or if he was shot or, or what happened. Or we, we, we weren't certain about what was going on. We were trying to get the, the information. You know what I'm saying? And um so but when we got to the hotel it was official because they was like right there in the lobby hugging and embracing and crying. You know what I'm saying? Like and I was like, damn this shit is true. You know what I mean? So um me and Timo from Goody Mob, we jumped in the truck with Buster and and and, 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 and his and his crew. And we went up to Mount Sinai, man. Um, and we were there at the at the scene where the where the suburban is taped off, uh, right in front of the of the emergency door exit. And um, it's it's crazy because we was looking at the show Hip Hop Evolution on Netflix, and, th- and there's a clip where you can see you can see Timo's jacket because it had a big Goody Mob logo on it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like so, anybody for anybody who ever doubted, you know, I mean, not not that they have anything, but like. Or felt like that that story could be exaggerated in the least bit. It's all facts, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, we definitely was there. We definitely witnessed that. It's still unfortunate. He still missed, and he's still one of the greatest of all time, man. So rest in peace to be. How old were you at the time when that happened? Because I know you were 17 when you wrote the verse on "Get Up, Get Out." So how old were you at the time of his death? Were you 21 yet? Yeah, I might have been. Um, yeah, that. Yeah, I should have been. I should have been 21 by then. Yeah. Uh, I only ask that because it's like life experiences are crazy and the things that you went through and the things that you live at an early age. Talk about even, because I got this written down, at 17 right now versus get up and get out and how that process was. Um, That verse that, that verse right there was more or less like a memoir. You know hmm. what I mean? Like, because I'm, cause I'm, really, I'm really living that verse at that time. So like that verse was written in real time. Um, and I said to myself that it would be, you know, the the um, the evidence that you know I would present to my aunt, you know, if and when I ever got the opportunity to record or, you know, me or, 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 or do it or do what I was trying to do. So like, I wanted to let her know, even when we couldn't truly communicate it to each other, I wanted to convey that message, you know, to her in song. You, you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I wrote it as kind of an, an ode to her, just to let her know that I, I was listening and and I, and I was taking heed to her advice. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So 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 that that was the uh, that was the situation surrounding, 
you know, me writing that verse. You know what I mean? All right, I want to ask you 